I'm here with a very special guest, uh, Ashwani Tiwari, who has been the number one player of Punjab for quite some time and also his highest rating has been 2300. Uh, Ashwani, thank you for uh, coming here and you're going to treat us to some delicious games. Huh? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sagar. Thanks to Chessbase India for this opportunity. I'm so happy to be with you and share my experiences. Right. I uh, I came to Punjab here uh, for a couple of days to do some training and I met Ashwani and I uh, saw a few of his games and they were so, so interesting, uh, aggressive that we had to get him and uh, see some of his games. So, Ashwani, which would be the first game that you would like to show the viewers? Uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, you know, I think uh, we'll go back, uh, little, not little, but quite back in history. Uh, 22 think, tw years. 22 years, you know. Uh, this is about National B uh, 1996, you know, uh, where I think I gave one of my best performances and achieved my uh, 2300 rating. I think by those standards in those days, I think uh, it was a pretty, pretty uh, good mark. I think I was ranked about 20th or 22nd on the rating list at that point. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe unfortunate, unfortunately for me, I had to move to academics after that, but uh, chess is always my first love and uh, uh, I think this game with Dipanjan Das, you know, uh, he was like, I was unrated at that point and uh, Dipanjan had, had carried a lot of weight and his past history of performance and a uh, lot of his spoils in juniors and other places. So. Uh, this game I really played I think well I knew not not a lot of his uh, you know theory on this but yes basics I did and then middle game I think it was very nice I okay. really like that so we start off you are white yes and uh, you like to play the alapin uh, yes I I would call this a lazy man's preparation because you know alapin means you want to avoid all Sicilians uh, and uh, you're not basically if because I was not very very regular you know into preparation due to various co commitments so i had to find something you know which is reliable as well as and cuts through the opponent's preparation and i didn't want to go mainline sicilians uh, and uh, i think uh, this was the most suitable uh, you know solution i could think of right so uh, he i think the opening is very well known yeah absolutely uh, it's all theory uh, but maybe d5 is not as common as d6 perhaps uh, that that that's right but uh, fair enough but generally uh, you know these days yeah of course d5 is not very common but d6 uh, basically if the white's intent is to take on e to d6 i mean it gets transformed ah, to okay. uh, so you the structure anyway. yes yes uh, so i think uh, here my opponent you know i generally you know i think the popular move here is bishop e6 uh, which is generally to get rid of that BB3, uh, you know, which is an aggressive piece, white piece, and probably the one of the best developed piece on the board. Uh, and uh, here my opponent, you know, surprised me with the move uh, bishop f5. Mm -hmm. So here actually I'm out of the book right now because yeah. uh, uh, I didn't expect him to play bishop f5. Uh, and uh, here I had to just apply my mind on the board and whatever principles or theory I could remember, what I could do about it. So, so I thought, you know, uh, white has to play aggressive because he has got aggressive pieces and it's not about winning a pawn or two here I think it's a question of development I'm already ahead in terms of because of the king side um, I'm already castled and he will have some problems developing his black bishop and get his king to safety if he's just too greedy you know taking pawns but uh, I mean a normal move here would be CD4 just yes, getting back your pawn absolutely I mean uh, that would be really I mean uh, you know a precise answer to just get into that and develop NC3 and right. uh, normal developments but then you know I thought you know uh, not uh, your style uh, yeah not my style and then you know I was already out of the book so I thought over the board you know what's the best way forward uh, so uh, you know went uh, knight a3 and with the idea that my one more piece comes into play so you are looking at uh, the b5 square b5 square square and you know utilizing his weaknesses over c7 and probably you know make use of that bishop f5 because the d4 i think it's a wonderful place for the knight because it wins the tempo or against that bishop and then it's justified that that the move which actually practically everybody chooses that bishop e6 you know is why it is better than bishop f5 okay. be because i think you lose more time and you can't afford to lose time as black uh, you know so here my opponent gets into you know he took here but you see, usually when you want to attack, 
you want to keep the queens on board that's right and the nice thing here is that you readily exchange the queens uh, yeah that's right because i found that uh, i think out of all his pieces which are developed you know i think the queen was the best developed piece in the sense uh, that it was doing a lot of defensive job guarding the c7 square uh, and you know uh, for me it was important to have the d file because uh, uh, not to let his king go the you know the uh, queen side way because that's the place where you like to go into shelter and then you know maybe move his pieces freely uh, but you know uh, here you know my knight is like on the top and uh, my rook is on the open file uh, i think i'm less uh, you know one pawn less you know on the board but i think that matters more in the end game Yes. If I'm able to have my development, and uh, which rightly, you know, happened, and I think here, uh, really, I so he, he stopped knight c7. Yes. But then this b into c3. I mean, you are weakening your structure, but uh, maybe not the most important thing in the position, right? Uh, that's right. But I had to think about bringing my, you know, uh, bishop c1 out into the play mm -hmm. because that's my last piece which is undeveloped. And till the time I'm uh, not able to bring it to, you know, uh, develop, let's say, square like f4, uh, you know, there's always a problem of that uh, cb2 coming and with the f5 bishop, his whole idea starts working. Correct. So, so I have to do some, take some prophylactic measure against that. My pawn structure is bad, all right, but then, you know, now the problem is that his, the d4 square, which I was looking for, is promising one, one tempo to me, mm -hmm. so which will allow me to bring that bishop up. Uh, that black bishop which is right now not developed so practically I have my developed pieces right now okay uh, yes. so he went a6 and you played knight bd4 so I think he helped me here yeah. by by just you know kicking the knight away he could have thought of something else uh, and maybe he e4 e6 or e5 e, yes yeah, some development move uh, you know definitely uh, his, he has a promising position it's not that white is outrightly better here but uh, uh, you know this is what I wanted and this is what he did so mm -hmm. now you have your pieces nicely placed you develop your last piece yes now i'm doing a discovered attack on this piece so so, so now uh, unfortunately for him you know uh, there are a lot of uh, issues with that knight uh, basically it's developed but it has to lose tempo again uh, and i think uh, this is i think uh, uh, where I sense that my pieces are developed now I have to be very attacking I think that that pressed me to the next move which was the actual idea and he probably thought it is like a like a move which will probably he'll be able to kick off my bishop but so I had no intention B5. yes but I had no intention to move that bishop out of this diagonal so tell us when you sacrificed your knight did you see like you're going to win this game or it was just an intuitive sacrifice? Uh, it was like an intuitive sacrifice because I, I, I can only say this was uh, play, uh, played, you know, where, you know, I thought mostly over the board and this was mostly intuitive. So, no preparation as No, such. not preparation, but did you, could you see right till the end that you will win this position or it was like, I have compensation and yeah, I... Yes, yes, yes. I thought, you know, I have compensation, I have attack. Uh, probably, you know, I may not end losing this game. You know, uh, so so at least you know he has pressure. He has I could see uh, you know the a pawn you know is clearly running with yeah. the support of my bishop still a seven. So so I think all so of this these two guys yes and your bishop mm -hmm. combined with uh, the rooks are coming to the d file. Yeah, yes. that's your plan. That's right. That's right. So so I'm uh, definitely better in terms of I think pieces here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if he's able to get rid of his f eight bishop to somewhere you know and able to castle and uh, you know move out of this bind. I think uh, black is already too better. Too much to ask for. Yeah, yes. Bishop yeah. F5. So, 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 so. I mean, this proves my point because see, the bishop f5, it has just spent three moves doing the same thing. Correct. So it's coming back to f5. If you see, technically, is losing tempo all the time. Correct. So, so now, now I think. Uh, uh, and, and this is not an easy move to make. A4. Yes. You are saying to him. Look, I have completely cornered you. Yes. You're in a bind. Yes. Now I'm going to push my opponent. Yes. Also, I, I, I had a fair idea that, you know, I'm going to get a lot of play. Uh, only thing which I was afraid of was that, you know, uh, you know, if he's able to exchange material and get rid of this bind, uh, you know, then probably I'm not getting the compensation what I'm looking for. But yes, this prom uh, position has a lot of compensation. I think the development, I think that, that sense of uh, intuitiveness for that development, I can say that I could admire there in this position and uh, playing a higher rated player being a unrated player uh, maybe the good part is that probably i was not fearing anything because i uh, already a better player and so i've got nothing to lose Correct. so so probably that works against a, a higher rated player as well so he went king e7 yes coming out of the pin you just 
push your yes, pawn yes yes and you push your pawn yes you, and you, <laughs> you have just no idea to stop yes. uh, bishop g7 so he's finally fully developed uh, fully developed but now i have a one uh, monster at a6 mm. uh, you know and uh, uh, you know he starts uh, having issues now you know because of this a pawn correct so he took with uh, the rook here perhaps bishop d7 is also a possible move uh, yeah that that, that 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 that's right but i have a bishop c5 check available uh, or maybe maybe first bishop d6 yeah 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 intermediate yes we I can do some this improvement yes this rook would uh, so d7 is gone correct. yes d7, d7 is, is anyways gone yes so he has to take with the rook yes and you took bishop c5 check so i'm winning some uh, good you know i'm getting good position for my uh, pieces before you know executing my final plan correct so king c8 and now a7 yes. so so you're threatening to queen yes. but uh, i mean there's no no real way to to stop that pawn that's right what what a nice uh, crowning of a strategy absolutely yeah? absolutely i mean uh, this transformation of course i mean it will be uh, you know i would like to admit you know in, i couldn't have seen this far uh, and uh, uh, it's only the sense of the position and the pieces i could say that you know made me believe that this position is uh, definitely better for white and maybe here i was actually good correct in my judgment that you know the pieces are far superior than you know the material on the board at this point but still he has some defense because although you won back your piece he he took your b6 bishop uh, yes so, uh, uh, yes but here i had already seen that the weakness of the seventh rank and i thought you know uh, yes uh, is this is this winning for you because uh, ah okay the the bishop is kind of trapped yes a bishop is kind of trapped it has the can't go out somewhere mm -hmm. so so he has to defend the eighth rank all the time right. uh, the a7 bishop is giving me all the compensation uh, here i thought you know i thought i cannot lose this because now at least i have reasonable two pawns plus getting compensation because this third pawn yes so 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 basically you know even if he manages to win back something you know uh, I, with this isolated pawn one of them will actually fall so so i thought you know i will not lose because anyways he doesn't have any uh, you know uh, past pawn or something where i need to fear so it's all king side pawns he has so i cannot lose out of this so that also sometimes you know helps you when you are you are sure that you're not going to lose then you know the opponent is always under the pressure because he is the one who is going to make a move which can lose the game for him but he has also trick now you have a weak back rank the back rank but so this this pawn actually helps me guard the g5 and, uh, and, and this your um, your opponent blundered yeah blundered he had bishop c1 yeah. and but i think you know anyways you know after bishop c1 you know there are uh, you know i could play rook b, rook g7 and you know i would still be in the game i mean there's nothing which uh, forces me to mm. think that perhaps I'm this would end in a draw or something like uh, yes probably but he will have to fight for because the pawns are limited yeah. so 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 at the end of the day you this know this guy is not going to go anytime soon yeah, i mean yeah. you you could win this one and then yeah the h so pawn will start running so but bishop d2 and maybe we can ask our viewers here yes. white to play and win uh, yeah yes it's very uh, simple yes very today. simple i think a double attack uh, you know and uh, just the pinning of the rook on the eighth rank you know is just simply helpless and i think what what help uh, you know uh, what i can say uh, uh, one can say from this game is that you know the real uh, work of the rook on the seventh rank i think hmm. it gorgeously did the job i think hmm. it just wiped so out which would have been happy uh, yeah uh, yeah i'm sure they i mean of course those are greats and i'm no way close to them but uh, definitely they would be happy seeing you know what the job this rook from basically a1 you know brought havoc on the seventh rank which was absolutely pinned position where you couldn't say that these seventh rank pawns ultimately some 15 moves back if you go uh, you won't believe that these pawns will not survive correct and uh, or, or with all that extra piece you know is simply you know uh, just losing uh, you know pieces uh, you know pawns uh, across the rank and still you know the beauty admire the beauty of the a7 pawn you know <laughs> is untouchable uh, you know yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so this victory was truly beautiful and you played very well uh, uh, but there was i think another game that 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 we will look at now yes. where you played fantastic kings indian from Absolutely. black side uh, so so this one was your game against atanu lahiri yes atanu uh, i think uh, very well he known was coach was he an already an im uh, no i don't think he was an im at that point uh, but he was uh, regarded pretty well because he represented lic and and i think uh, 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 you know uh, you know players who you know are in some institution you know they are there because of their past track records and merits 
and uh, atanu is a very well regarded coach and a chess player i think he is one of the well known uh, you know players you know who enjoys his chess yes. travels and you know somebody you know really a good trainer i mean he, he is definitely a great player uh, and he has won the commonwealth championship by the way he is a commonwealth champion uh, but here y- you were with the black pieces i think your favorite is the kings indian yes it used to be uh, but you know ultimately now i'm moved to dutch for various reasons because again it saves me time because when you are doing the main line kings indian you really have to be very well prepared and a regular player and which i am not at this point so but s- this na- uh, this is all main line theory yeah, this is uh, main i line think theory. We, we don't have to discuss much y- f5 y- is met y- with f3 yes that's right and it's simple you know the plan is pretty simple G5. Uh, so you are going for his king side while he's going for your queen side absolutely um tell us till what point you knew the theory or you are already on your own uh well i had seen a lot of games uh, kasparov has played and uh, you know he's the, i think the idol at that point in 96 that yeah. you played this game yes. i think gary was on his height of power yeah he was high, uh, you know at his peak and you also must remember that this that was not the time where you had databases uh you know you had to prepare from your traditional informators and uh, uh which used to take about you know 3 months lag coming into india mm-hmm. uh, because you know it was like if somebody has played a game you know it was not instantaneously available to indian chess players right. uh so so had seen these lot of positions from his old games and collections thanks to chessmate and uh, uh, uh you know informators you know which we used to wait and buy from tournaments you know and <laughs> go there so 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 uh, uh, this is p- uh, peculiar i think of kings indian uh, well these days this may not be the reality because uh, uh, white has lot of other uh, possibilities to cut these options but here the next maneuver which you do is very typical rook That's f7 right. and then put your bishop to f8 what what's the idea because your bishop is not very active there uh, i think the only idea here is to bolster over protect my d6 uh, the whole point is that you know uh, black, uh, white is going to play on the d6 and c7 square so my knight has given me one clear you know defense against that c7 uh, my rook on a8 is out of play uh, which eventually is in the many many lines of kings indian you know it comes into action pretty late the bishop c c8 is one key you know which that guy should remain yes that Rook is the can die but bishop c8 uh, uh, yes that i was pretty clear i think uh, somewhere you know you read uh, you know see th- go through the games of legends you know some lessons are there for life you know even you change the switch the theory uh, you know and uh, you know uh, move order gets uh, changed you know those lessons help you you know because you know that the key piece here uh, is the white bishop uh, or see it on, on we, we are going to see how that bishop comes uh, into uh, play uh, yes i think i think you know generally people would say that the f8 bishop is the king's indian bishop but actually you know i would say that c8 bishop is actually the king's indian bishop correct so so most of them think that you fian shot to a, a g6 bishop it's the king's indian bishop but i would say that this bishop has got the most of the role to play if you look here Atanu has already started making progress on the queen side. That's right. Your attack still seems a bit slow. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but absolutely. But uh, let's see you you are undeterred. Yeah, you just start pushing your pawns. Y- yes, I was pretty clear that if I'm going to defend on my queen side, uh, you know, a lot of moves and uh, tempos will go wasted and my attack is going to become slow. Only way I can survive against him is by uh, initiating a king side attack and that too without uh you know any delay and right. uh, i think my posi- uh, position my pieces you know i think are relatively in a decent position right. maybe e8 and f8 pieces you know knight on e8 and uh, you know f8 bishop may not look great but they are doing a great They'll defensive job soon. yeah they are and doing a great defensive job and now queen c8 is i is uh, directed towards g4 yeah that's right so i need to have that control because uh, without that you know i can't afford to give away a pawn on g4 and think of my attack succeeding because i think that's the key area f4 g4 you know once i get at least he has some pressure that's Correct. what i am targeting so g uh, he went knight c2 g4 and now knight b4 yes uh, i think atanu's play has been very logical yes absolutely he wants to get his bishop here next bishop there so yes he, his plan is pretty clear and uh, i can only uh, i can already see that my a8 rook is going not going to survive <laughs> and so you don't care but about uh, it yeah yeah uh, uh, it's not exactly see it's uh, such a heavy piece you know rook you can't afford to but then i could uh, s- see that there is a lot of king side initiative here the only chance i have here i think that way the position is easier for black you know because there is it's a very clear thing that 
black has to do nothing about the queen side because if he's just going to go there and defend you know he's going to lose the game so queen uh, knight g7 bishop a6 queen d8 and now here comes the critical moment uh, tell us about your next move this is g3 very typical king's indian move Absolutely. but uh, what was going through your mind and uh, how are you going to because he can take the pawn as well uh, that, that 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 that's right that's pretty uh, clear but i think i could sense you know i have uh, you know f, uh, you know uh, you, you know take and take yeah yes then i start getting tempo with the uh, h4 at once uh -huh. and uh, you know i got uh, you so know he goes here maybe you, you and then, I, then yeah so i not h3 but i got one more play with knight h5 you know i got knight g3 you know these things are coming now ah. so 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 he may win the rook but now uh, i have got some three pieces with a rook you know coming to play let's say in case h file gets opened so he'll definitely face problems because uh, uh, he is definitely cramped on king side one thing for sure uh, so his king is not going to get a escape route quickly uh, you know in case my pawn gets on g3 okay. so 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 this is uh, maybe you he maybe could maybe he can go king g1 here uh, but uh, uh, that, that that's right it's possible uh, uh, but you know again i could have you know then gone for you know maybe uh, move like maybe you know queen a8 perhaps you take this but I guess this could have been better than what he played in the game. Absolutely. I think what he underestimated was the king side attack. I think he thought that uh, the f2 bishop defends the position well and uh, he's anyway safe, you know, because uh, he's focused on winning the queen side. I think he has already done the job there. So he took on a8, you took back yes. and he played bishop g1. He wants to keep the integrity of his yes, position. Yes, pawn, pawn structure, right. yes. Because because I think uh, clearly he's sensing that, uh, you know, the one way of uh, avoiding the attack is that you know uh, uh, not to open up the king side you know and so he's uh, trying to avoid that g3 you know uh, opening of hg3 you know uh, which will also open the F fg3 you know which implies the rook will also start getting active and in some cases where you know uh, the although the, both the knights on d5 and b4 protect each other but in case somewhere you know i am able to exchange the d5 knight i also have knight f4 coming which is quite dangerous uh, in that position so h4 and if given a chance h3 is your idea yeah, absolutely I so think. he he blocked it absolutely and i think now to break through you will need a sacrifice absolutely on h3 yes so queen c8 now you're threatening h3 yeah, yes i think he now realized the perils of the position because uh, uh, you know i think he would regret that he did not exchange on g3 earlier because <laughs> probably he could defend the any any intermediate attack which could have come now it is more difficult because the king is cramped my pawn chain is so strong that you know he simply have very very less space for his king to maneuver so bishop h3 i guess is possible but after takes takes and bishop h2 yes there might be a little bit difficulty for you to continue yes although this could be possible you went knight h5 yes because i believe that this h3 is unavoidable bishop okay. h3 anyways he can't change this so i need to have more pieces here and uh, you know somewhere you know if i could uh, you know uh, you know uh, get another piece and take advantage of the g3 square uh, ultimately you know once those pawn chain that pawn chain is broken you know i will have a g2 advance available and you know uh, and knight g3 coming i think that will be pretty dangerous and it's like a checkmate so queen a6 and now comes the beautiful part of the game where you allowed the exchange of the queens yes that's uh, right i think this is also easy to miss because uh, uh, how is the attack going to continue now it's clear that you will play h3 and knight h4 yes but maybe when you are playing this queen e2 queen a6 as atanu did it was not so clear to him uh, yes i think he thought that queen a6 solves his problems because i think general principle in chess you know when you are under attack you start exchanging the queen and attacking piece and um, i think uh, queen was one of the most uh, aggressive piece there because queen h3 uh, at some stage uh, with a check is actually devastating correct. so i think his assessment is correct but practically when he goes for the exchange uh, he underestimates the power of black pieces now because so he, he takes the pawn yes. and now the a pawn is going to be a queen but yes absolutely look at the king side yes look at the king side i think he has still got some chances to survive but now uh, just see the power of black pieces i think uh, uh, b3 looks uh, kind of what is he doing but rook is coming from a2, a2 yes so another line of defense and now why did he take i i was thinking rook a2 perhaps here 
uh, is possible yes it's possible but uh, i think then there is a exchange and bishop h3 you know those kind okay. of things can happen uh, bishop h3 yes uh, those things can happen and uh, you know you always must remember f3 is gone and now this is forced by yes. i think yes somehow. so 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 and f3 is gone this. yes so 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 he's got a lot of mess and g3 is already guarded and you, i take the rook and then the f3 comes mm -hmm. uh, you know i think lot of problems yeah. for bla uh, yes, you know why to solve pawns are rolling and his a pawn is not as quick yes it so is not as quick and i think the lot of threats on the uh, king side for white uh, and i think uh, that queen side everything textbook wise is absolutely correct what white has done but i think uh, blacks attack somewhere the kings kings indian attack on the king side has worked out here and at least uh, i think uh, you know bl uh, black should win this position because simply there's too much to defend here so g h 3 yes g 2 yes king h 2 you made a queen now you are materially ahead yes you are a piece up yes uh, but let's see how you convert this i think you had absolutely no problem yes absolutely i mean this is like he had no way to you know defend this because rook g 1 here would mean knight f 3 gone yeah instead of a 6 if rook g 1 yes. knight f 3 is winning yes and maybe rook uh, f 2 is one possible option for him to defend but i think then you have uh, uh, you know rook g3 coming and uh -huh. uh, you have got lot of uh, pressure again and here this is, this is falling yes this is falling f3 is falling so let's assume i play a6 you take this you come here and then maybe knight g3 yes absolutely this uh, is possible or maybe yeah absolutely, absolutely because the rook h2 is met with knight, knight f3. f3 yes that's right this is like the complete triumph of your strategy yes. two knights there uh, so in the game he went a6 rook g2 and knight g3 i think uh, every uh, king's <coughs> indian player's dream yes absolutely <laughs> and i think uh, uh, what he uh, i think he did everything correct what was required as a white player i think but what he uh, missed was somewhere defensive resources yeah. uh, by you know allowing uh, you know exchange on g3 uh, you know he, he thought you know that the pawn structure like that he, i won't be able to break the pawn structure but i think this H, this bishop on c8 I think it made some couple of movements and I think uh, this is the key pin I think uh, uh, see the f8 bishop is still standing spectator you know it's not doing anything much right and that bishop is guarding your king well and everything is safe yes there. just avoiding the 97 and right. all those stuff right. uh, so so I think uh, this is the real you know I would say the ultimate you know what a king's Indian player wishes to correct so, so we'll we'll look at one final game now uh, that was not a very favorable result for you you lost it against Saptarshi Roy uh, yes but, but I must tell you I mean this was the fifth round game for the National B yeah. so this was uh, played in the fifth round no no uh, I'm referring to the other game uh, the one which is uh, we played with Atanu uh, uh -huh, you okay. know so that was like a fifth round game and uh, I, sc I was like uh, uh, something like four bar five uh, okay. and i think uh, that really motivated me to you know get into you know uh, the national b you know with a strong you know unrated player then you know all of a sudden uh, i started meeting the all 2300s and others and uh, at one point i was six bar eight and i think uh, that is the key highlight i can say that uh, being unrated and all, uh, almost playing in the top 10 boards and you know there are restricted spots of national a uh, you know in those days and of course these days as well but uh, much much tougher in the sense uh, for an unrated guy too yeah so you got a first initial rating of 2300 absolutely wow yeah so that's uh, very unique yeah i think uh, i was fortunate to have that because uh, uh, this tournament uh, this national b in chennai and generally chennai the strongest uh, bed of chess you know uh, you know where you you know all players thrive and uh, you have such a strong chess culture there i think uh, so happy that uh, place like chennai you know i'm able to do well i have good history with chennai and good friends uh, in chennai as well so uh, you say friends so all these players like say ramesh or uh, uh, vishveshwaran uh, yeah so so we are all good great they, friends they are of your your age yes uh, they are so even sarvanan comes in that or uh, uh, no sarvanan uh, uh, you know actually uh, i've been not playing regular very uh, regularly but uh, sarvanan used to be in the more senior circuit i think and uh, uh, being ramesh and uh, uh, you know vishveshwaran we have been playing through those national juniors uh, so you know definitely uh, Sarnan, uh, you know, I got caught in touch quite later, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but of course, because of the, you know, Sundarajan Kadambi, uh, then you have uh, Ramesh and uh, Vishveshwaran and all these 
players you know and even uh, uh, you know mr venkatesh uh, you know because all of the juniors and they were sub juniors at that point so uh, so this we, we the final game that we are going to look now yeah. that's against another top indian player yes, who became Uh, the who became the 51st grand master of india that's Sattar right that's right that's right and he loved to play the scandinavian that's so right. like he was always playing the scandinavian that, that's right and how did you prepare for this game because it was way back in 2003 and you knew that he would play this against you uh, yeah so basically see this particular structure uh, of uh, scandinavian i really like the structure i've been playing it very well Uh, with the white side uh, white side yes absolutely uh, the point is that uh, you know uh, generally on the queen a5 you know you face a different kind of a setup when you are doing queen d6 yeah. you know on a uh, uh, on a move 3 that's altogether a different setup but uh, in this particular setup white can set up a aggressive formation i mean and so i feel you know i i'm more bent towards more attacking or a more open we position we can see that yeah, yeah so c6 queen e2 bishop f5 knight f3 everything pretty normal yes. until now and now this move bishop d2 uh i think the c2 pawn is not really hanging because of some discovered attack on uh, the queen uh, so the discovered attack is there even i think i can afford to do rook c1 uh, bring one more piece into play and then probably go d5 somewhere and uh, you know i think uh, uh, there's lot of compensation i think uh, i won't mind this giving away this pawn right uh, because the c file is uh, like he has very few pieces to defend upon the back 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 rank correct so he didn't take this pawn he went back yes and you played this move h3 uh, long castle was perhaps more uh, in the spirit but yes. you had an idea yes again uh, you know i'm trying to entice him to play bishop c2 but again you know i know he won't fall for that because uh, rook c1 again puts his c7 queen you know in trouble somewhere and of course the uh, you know still that combination holds because of the discovered attack Uh, on the d5 because the c7 queen is there and i always have a b5 check and somewhere there will be a uh, you know okay a uh, defense can be found but black won't feel happy defending you know this particular right. position just for a pawn but he he went knight bd7 yes, and now he is following he normal development and and there is this red square on d5 i don't understand why it's because it's so heavily guarded yes there is one pawn knight and uh, but still you yeah he has got two pawns to defend the square along with the uh, knight uh, but i think uh, what what the problem is that the king is in center he is not already done bishop e7 what it uh, helps me do is expand my center and i think uh, yeah yes so so i want to kick this knight away uh, and now, now a defender of d5 is gone so so just pause this video and try to think what white should do here he is ahead in development and he as you know Ash- ashwani he will do something crazy yeah so <laughs> he did go for d5 uh, and very nice move by the way uh, cd5 maybe a possibility yes that's right but uh, uh, i think knight d5 yes i think knight d5 is coming and uh, your setup is disturbed and uh, uh, you know uh, there is always you know uh, uh, a bishop b5 kind of a threat coming somewhere okay. and all, uh, you know so i think uh, uh, generally speaking you know when you can open up center you know and you are ahead in development i think m- mostly 9 out of 10 times you know it will work in your favor right. and uh, you know uh, my king may look in the center but you know i think uh, i'm adequately developed that's the key uh, black is still behind in development i think he's not thinking of an attack on white king at least and uh, i think expanding the center helps my pieces open up and gives this particular bishop on c4 more breathing space and i think uh, he actually uh, you know uh, uh, now try to castle long and take advantage take on e6 fe6 and long castle and i think at this point you're clearly better uh, although in the in the game towards the end uh, the result wasn't very favorable for you yes that's right I, yeah actually i got under time pressure i think uh, that's uh, something Uh, which is like uh, has been with me for some time and it is i can say so 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 the time pressure you know took its toll and uh, probably under time pressure i just uh, blundered uh, you know and he could win the game but i okay. think the positionally yes this game is uh, definitely favorite favorable for white and uh, because you know, the h5 knight is really out of play uh, g6 bishop may look great but uh, you know it is ready for an exchange because a lot of pieces can come to e5 and then f4 or you know they can yeah. be 
and and later you did go knight h4 yes. and knight e4 so this was uh, another nice game i think uh, one thing which we definitely want to know from you from your games the way you attack if a player wants to become a good attacking player how can he do that uh, i think uh, uh, the most important thing is to develop your uh, you know chess intuition and for that you know need to have uh, that you know touch for your development rapid development i think there are very rarely games where you know you lack in development are and are able to attack i think the key for any good attacking player would be he would have a rapid development and uh, i think generally you know if you can expand into the center and open up if you are ahead in development i think generally uh, uh, traditionally also you know you would have a advantage in attacking because so you mean to say first get ahead in development yes. and then have the heart to sacrifice yes absolutely i think uh, that is the key and uh, i generally believe that yes uh, if you if you are able to develop and you are getting the good structure and uh, you know squares for your pieces i think that is the key uh, for 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 ingredient for attack uh, of course uh, uh, you need to keep an eye on the defenders and you need not be wild about attacking uh you have to have a measure like for example in this position you know uh the knight is or you know on a rim and uh, uh, there's a definite weakness available and the pieces are developed i think uh, uh, one can clearly conclude um, development is the key to attack i think i i believe generally i believe this way i won't like to attack you know if my development i'm mean behind in development which is maybe a wrong also uh, situation because sometimes you know you may be behind in development but the attacking possibilities exist but in general i'm talking you know yes, yes. positions like this you will have more development means uh, your you know initiative and i think i would call it you know initiative and attack you know combined you know initiative will then transform into attack at some right. point so ashwini um, thank you for showing these games to us uh, all the friends with whom you played back in the time have become ims or gms or very strong players yes. uh, anything on your mind that you want to become an im or a gm soon yeah definitely it may not happen soon because uh, i'm not still playing regularly once in a year kind of a player sometimes uh, even more so last tournament i played was the beel international which is july 2017 and i'm yet to play a competitive chess which is almost a year and uh -huh. i think i have no plans for another four months your hands must be itching to yeah abso 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 absolutely <laughs> and uh, uh, but you know chess requires you to go back and prepare and you just can't go into a professional tournament just so by I'm, I'm sitting right now in ashwini's office here and there is a huge library of maybe around 50 odd books which he studied uh, so definitely a high passion chess player uh, what do you do right now for a living uh, well basically i am an investment advisor a wealth manager uh, you know i manage uh, assets and wealth for people i have clients for whom i manage uh, and that is my like core area at this point and from last about 10 years i am into this profession do so you think chess helps you to analyze better or something like that absolutely i think uh, chess is uh, definitely if i have to uh, share the you know there are great rewards for playing chess you know uh, intangible rewards <coughs> with your uh, thinking and strategic ability in my work you know require a lot of strategic ability i think uh, uh, you will find a lot of chess players uh, into various areas which are strategic in nature and uh, they do pretty well in those areas. I just hope that you know this has already helped me and will keep helping me because uh, it keeps your you know uh, brain sharper all the time and you are ready for the markets what they are doing and you are okay can't predict but at least anticipate few moves ahead uh, where the things are happening. Correct. So yes. th uh, that's wonderful advice and Ashwani thanks a lot for talking to us. Uh, we wish you good luck for your future. Uh, uh, thank, mm. thank you so much, Sagar. Thanks to Chessbase India and thanks for coming to Jalandhar and uh, sharing your wisdom with young children of Jalandhar. Thank you.